Welcome to First UMC of Hammond. My name is Chris. I'm the pastor here, and I am so glad that you have joined us this morning. You know, I'm. Uh, I think quarantine is getting to a lot of uh, a lot of us this morning. We're uh, here at the church, and it's a, a little colder than it usually is in the sanctuary. The sanctuary is usually nice and warm. The blowers weren't yet going, and uh, I was a little chilly, and so I. Uh, I for some reason had not had my extra sweater that I usually keep in the office and I was trying to scramble around looking for something, some more layers to put on. And finally, as I'm looking around, Sarah uh, says to me, she says, you can wear a robe. And I did a quick Google search and realized that that is a, in fact, something that pastors do. So uh, here this morning, you see me be robed and before you here to worship. And I am so glad that you are here with me. If you are on Zoom or Facebook, Either way, we are glad you're here. If you are on Facebook, would you hit the like and share buttons? That helps us get this into as many eyeballs and onto as many devices as possible. And while it is not the main thing, it is not nothing. So we appreciate your help with that. Uh, when it comes time, well, you can use uh, the comment section now to interact with each other. Say hi, share stories, recipes, whatever. And during prayers and concerns, whether you're on Facebook or Zoom, we encourage you to use the comment section as a way to share those uh, joys and concerns. On the back of your bulletin, uh, the digital copy, I believe that's the second page that shows up in a, a PDF document, but that's besides the point. You will see the uh, prayer concerns announcements. Uh, not much, by the way, of all of that. Uh, I will let you look through those and we'll look through the prayer list later on. Uh, I do want to uh, let you know that uh, the uh, pandemic uh, early on was uh, sort of new for all of us. We were figuring out different ways to uh, not only cope, but to uh, survive and to thrive. And a little thing called, well, at that time it was called morning prayer and praise, but turned into what a day when uh, we moved here to First UMC of Hammond. And, and as uh, the uh, social distance guidelines have uh, changed, and, you know, quarantine and lockdown type things to uh, changed and the nature of it has all changed. It has become more and more difficult to produce a show every weekday like that. So I do want to let you know that uh, uh, as of right now, uh, What a Day will not be a daily broadcast and uh, we're looking to retool uh, that whole thing. We will be bringing you and uh, I believe it'll be by beginning of March, if not before then, uh, a, a new live experience on Facebook for you to enjoy. But uh, uh, What a Day for right now is not going to be uh, broadcast daily. You're still encouraged. I want to encourage you to still use your uh, Book of Common Prayer, a Liturgy for Ordinary Radicals uh, book each day. It, it certainly helps me, and I encourage you to use it as well. With that, I will end announcements, and we will get down to it. And we begin each Sunday with the... We begin each Sunday the same way with our call and response. It's two lines. We repeat it three times. I say, O Lord, open our lips, and you respond, and we shall declare your praise. Are you ready? O Lord, open our lips, and we shall declare your praise. O Lord, open our lips, and we shall declare your praise. O Lord, open our lips, and we shall declare your praise. Now join me in singing hymn number 103, Immortal, Invisible God, Only Wise. Immortal, invisible God, only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the 
ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise, unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, thou rulest in might, thy justice like mountains high soaring above, thy clouds which are fountains of goodness and love. To all life thou givest, to both great and small, in all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree, and wither and perish, but not changeth thee. Thou reignest in glory, thou dwellest in light. Thine angels adore thee, all veiling their sight. All Lord, we would render, O oh, help us to see. Tis only the splendor of light hideth thee. The opening prayer, loving God, the psalmist wrote, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. We are gathered to hear that voice and to not only hear, but listen. Amen. Man was made for nothing, not by it. You know, can't get the things you really need. Oh, hello, I wasn't expecting you here. We're just cleaning up here a little bit. Um, we're expecting cookies to be delivered here next week. Um, so I'm just trying, trying to make it all nice and clean and sanitized so when everybody comes to pick up their cookies, they don't have to really worry. Um, I gotta get that today. Um, we're doing this on we record this on January 30th, so the cookies would have actually been delivered the day before you're watching this video, but that's okay. We are doing this, expecting a lot of people come to pick up their cookies, so we want to make sure it's all nice and clean for them. But, you know, some of you may remember a couple of months ago, I did a children's time message with four of my best friends in the world. They were Madison, Kathleen, Felissa, and Lizzie. And unfortunately, Lizzie got cut off in the picture a little bit. But, oh, I'm so sorry about that. But in it, I asked them three important questions we are going to be asking you every week. They are, what good did you see this week? How did God use you this week? Where did you see God at work in your life this week? Well, they enjoyed themselves so much, and their parents loved seeing them, and so did the members of their church. Awesome job that they were asking when they can do another one. When can they do that again? I told them maybe sometime in the spring, if we're still doing these by video, they all smiled and said they are looking forward to helping me with another video. A one girl, Adeline, was also wanting to be in the video. Well, she wasn't able to make it to the picnic, so uh, she missed out. However, all is not lost. Her mom, a friend of mine named Celine, and I were talking about her and Adeline helping me with one. Adeline has a birthday coming up, and I was making a handmade blanket for her. So when I bring it to her, you know, next February, we are all um, probably going to make a very special children's time video with my very special friend Adeline and her mom. And you all know what I think about homemade gifts. So I not only made the blanket for um, um, Adeline, but here's a sketch drawn I made of. That's her mom. Celine and that's Adeline there. It's a, a sketch I made of them. So get a good look at this. So you might recognize them in about um, a month or so. But they are looking forward to helping bring the word of God to you, the children of First United Methodist Church. 
I remember shortly before COVID-19 had caused all of us to stay home during worship, I was talking with our good friend Ansley. Ansley was telling me about how she was how she just saw a concert by one of her favorite singers, Taylor Swift. Now, little known secret, Mr. Mike, he's also a fan of Taylor Swift. And I, I think my favorite song by her is on Picture to Bear. I know it's an older one, but I, I still like that one. But anyway, I can just imagine how Ansley felt the weeks coming up to the big day at Soldier Field. As each day came closer to the big concert, she was probably getting more and more excited before the big day finally came. Well, it did come. And I could imagine all day she kept asking Nikki every half an hour, is it time to go yet? Being disappointed every time she was told no until, well, it was time to go. They all got in their car, made their way to the concert, found their seats, maybe got pop, popcorn, hot dogs, some snacks, I don't know, and waited impatiently until the big moment. Now, I don't remember she said um, if there was an opening act or not, and if there was, that just added to the excitement. Finally, the lights went down. Her band took the stage and started playing music. Where is Taylor Swift? Angeline may have asked her mother. Then, over the loudspeakers, someone said, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Taylor Swift! She then probably went out to the stage, waved to the audience with a big smile and a deafening roar of the crowd, then grabbed the microphone in hand and started singing. Probably one of her earlier hits. I'm going to guess you belong with me, but I don't know. I'm just really guessing. I, I don't know. But I could just imagine the excitement that Ansley felt, because I have also been to concerts, concerts to see some of my favorite groups play, one of my favorites possibly being the short-lived country band Yankee Gray when they performed during a festival at Wolf Lake Park back in the 90s. I could also imagine the excitement Ansley had, not only after Taylor Swift started performing, but the hopefulness she had waiting for Taylor to play her favorite song. I don't know what song that is, but I'm sure that Taylor Swift sang it, making for a lifetime great memory for our little friend Ansley. After Jesus was baptized, then spent 40 days in the wilderness, making last minute plans to start his ministry and being tempted by the devil three times while fasting. That means, you know, not eating food and just drinking enough water to survive him. He made his way to Galilee, where he did a, where he did a lot of preaching. When he was done there, he started to leave so he could preach in other places. A lot of people started following Jesus possibly thousands, as he started his trips to other lands. Knowing the people wanted to hear Jesus speak, he climbed up a mountainside and began to speak. Now this brings us to the memory verse for February, which is Matthew 5, 2. And he, Jesus, opened his mouth and taught them, saying, that is, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, now, you know, Jesus, um, in parentheses, isn't part of the verse. I just put that there to help remind you um, who was um, saying this, who was talking at the time. So anyway, Jesus climbed the side of the mountain, possibly lifted his hands to quiet the crowd, and opened his mouth to start to speak. Everybody watching must have felt so excited, waiting on just what Jesus was going to say. Just like my friends Madison, Kathleen, Felissa, and Lizzie, or even Adeline and Ansley, they were all so excited to find out just what happens next. Well, my friends, you're just going to have to wait for this. Hopefully as excited as my six friends waiting, um, or the crowds that followed Jesus waiting to hear what he had to say, because um, next month we'll be looking at what Jesus said during his Sermon on the Mount, and all year we will be taking a closer, a closer look at what is commonly referred to as the Beatitudes, which is what Jesus' Sermon on the Mount message was. Let's pray. Lord, teach me to think ahead about the results of my actions may cause and fret. If things go bad or awry, despite my plan ahead, my forethought helped me admit my wrongs and right them. And all the God's children say. Above all 
blessed Redeemer, living Word, Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord. Name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed In this time, we're entering into our time of prayer. Whether you are on Zoom or Facebook, let me encourage you to uh, use the comment section to share with us your joys and concerns. We do want to lift up the Hawkins family uh, with the loss of Josie. Uh, we want to lift the kids and the entire family uh, up in our prayers. The viewing uh, is today, uh, and the service is uh, private. And tomorrow, uh, you can uh, view on the uh, Kuiper Funeral Home website. Uh, if you would like to uh, get, give online condolences uh, and also to view the service there. So we want to lift uh, the family up in our prayers, uh, continuing to lift up names like uh, Amanda Cerna and uh, Ella Tiedemann and Jenny Beza and Roger Collier and Kathy Clark and John and uh, Don and Joanne Harris and uh, Nancy and Jerry Kolonowski and Bernie Newell and Helen O'Mara and Alan Piwawar and Logan Polich and Jane Shower, Henry and Pat Showers and Nancy and John Steele. Uh, we want to lift up the homebound Wayne Barnes, Del Goyers, Jim Mowry, Burl Puckering. And uh, we want to again encourage you in the comment sh section to share your joys and concerns. Uh, we will leave that open in all times. It's always available on uh, Facebook if you go back and check out the uh, live stream. Uh, we, uh, Rosalie is uh, thanking everyone for prayer for her dear uh, friend, Lauren. Uh, she did pass away a week ago, so let us lift up uh, the family in our prayers. We're so sorry, uh, Rosalie. Sorry about that. Can you, there we go. Um, we have um, praise and thanks for you, Pastor Chris, from Pauline, um, for all that you do, and grateful for um, you and your family. Um, but we also have prayers for June, Jordan Hall, Anthony, and their family. Thank you, Sarah. Again, continue to, in the comments section, share your joys and concerns. Let me, in this time, invite you to quiet your minds and hearts and go with me before God in prayer.
God of compassion, we turn to you on behalf of all who cry out to you day and night, yet hear only silence, who search for your presence with them but have felt nothing, who come to you in their pain or suffering, yet still long for your healing touch. In your holiness, you have blessed the faithful for centuries. You have been with us too since our births, granting us fullness of life. Each morning we witness the miracles of nature, of the rising sun, of the turning leaves. In the faces of our loved ones, we find friendship and nurture. In our communities, you bless us with resources to share. Yet many of us still need deliverance. Many feel surrounded by monsters too fierce to conquer alone. Many of us fear that our bodies will melt or souls will shrivel if we do not sense your presence. We weep with those who weep because of hungers, spiritual or physical, because of pain too strong to bear, because of grief that threatens to overcome, and any situation that threatens to tear us down to our very bones. God, who knows our deepest needs, as you have saved your people in the past, deliver us. Grant us the strength that comes from crying out to you, the hope that even when we cannot sense you, your healing love is at work. Give us voices to sing your praise once again that all may know of your abundant mercy, even as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Scriptures from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 31. Don't you know, haven't you heard, wasn't it announced to you from the beginning? Haven't you understood since the earth was founded? God inhabits the earth's horizon. Its inhabitants are like locusts, stretches out the skies like a curtain and spreads it out like a tent for dwelling. God makes dignitaries useless and the earth's judges into nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely is their shoot rooted in the earth when God breathes on them and they dry up, the windstorm carries them off like straw. So to whom will you compare me, and who is my equal, says the Holy One? Look up at the sky and consider, who created these? The one who brings out their attendants one by one, summoning each of them by name. Because of God's strength and mighty power, not one is missing. Why do you say Jacob and declare Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My God ignores my predicament. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't grow tired or weary. His understanding is beyond human reach, giving power to the tired and reviving the exhausted. Youths will become tired and weary. Young men will certainly stumble. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength they will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired. They will walk and not be weary. Thank you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I am sure the scientists that invented the internet would have 
decided, have chosen for it to be put to much better use as a repository of all human knowledge in existence. But sometimes it goes a little awry and it can start as simply as uh, someone trying to have a little fun and sharing a graphic or sometimes referred to as a meme on social media, on Facebook. And uh, there was one right as social media was starting to take off where uh, someone was attributing the quote, don't believe everything you read on the internet to someone like Abraham Lincoln. And we can see that uh, that's not quite, uh, not quite the issue. Now it can get as complicated today, and I'll argue that it's a, 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 a illustration of just how complicated the internet as a thing has become. But there is a, a, another a graphic or meme where it's a picture of uh, Jean-Luc Picard, the captain in uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. And on the, uh, next to him is this quote. The quote is, use the force, Harry. And they, there was probably some sort of uh, time and uh, it was attributed, the quote was attributed to Gandalf which if you're paying attention to the little words I'm using, uh, really points out that they are in nerd culture breaking all of the rules, right? There was Harry Potter's in there, there was Star Trek, there was Star Wars, there was uh, Lord of the Rings, so many. It, the internet can be a, a, an amazing tool, but in some ways can be a very confusing place to get accurate information as we have all seen over time. But this is not a new phenomenon because attributing information to the wrong people is something that human beings have done since the beginning. Arthur Schopenhauer, a famous buzzkill, a 19th century philosopher, wrote essays such as The Fullness of Nothing, I'm sorry, The Fullness of Nothingness, and On the Vanity of Suffering of Life. He saw life as, quote, a pendulum between suffering and boredom and the world itself as a form of hell. Now, in short, Artie was not the sort of guy you'd invite to join your next birthday party, funeral maybe, but not anything involving joy. Now, that hasn't stopped people from sticking quotes attributed to Schopenheimer in birthday cards for people of a certain age. Chances are, if you've made it to 40 or 50, someone has thrust a depressing-looking black greeting card in your hand containing the words attributed to our curmudgeonly philosopher. Just remember, once you're over the hill, you begin to pick up speed. Now, anyone who's made it to 40 or 50 knows this is true. And it's a bit sobering uh, when couched in humor. There's a problem, however. It's a quote that's still way too cheery for Schopenheimer. I mean, this guy combed the depths of human suffering and the depths of human emotion to have something so flippantly attributed to him is a bit problematic. He never wrote it. Given his view on life as a meaningless ordeal of suffering only allevi alleviated by a meaningless death, as writer Mark O'Connell of Slate puts it, there's no doubt that Schopenheimer, uh, uh, the attribution of this quote is bogus. Now, O'Connell plowed through some of Schopenheimer's dismal work and concluded that these words were unlikely ever to have flowed from Schopenheimer's poison-tipped quill. Instead, they originally appeared in a Peanuts comic strip written and drawn by cartoonist and philosopher Charles Schultz. O'Connell surmises that the misattribution came from a mistake associated with mixing up the, the name Schopenheimer next to the name Schultz in a, in a list of famous quotes. As simply as that, a, 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 something that is, is more of a nuisance confusion, but is a confusion nonetheless. Someone misread the, read the source and Schopenheimer's been getting miscredited ever since. Now, Schultz's Charlie Brown had a bit of Schopenheimer uh, streak in him, but he still kept trying to kick the football even after Lucy repeatedly pulled it out from underneath him. Even he wasn't as, even he wasn't as grumpy as Schopenheimer. Now, misquoting famous people has become something of a norm 
in the age of crowdsourcing and Wikipedia, the other things that you can do on the internet besides social media. We love to tweet a cool sounding quote on Twitter or put something pithy on our Facebook wall, but most people don't actually fact check the accuracy or context of the quote before they click send. Dozens of sites on the internet, like Brainy Quote, that offer long lists of quotes by famous people that are easy to cut and paste for your own personal use. Many of them, however, contain stuff that these people never said. Uh, be the change you wish to see in the world. Often attributed to Gandhi, but he never actually said this. What he actually said was if we change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. It's the same, but not really. It couches it in a form of personal responsibility that the faithful will understand or should understand. And it is definitely less hallmarky. You can't put that stuff on a t-shirt. There's this great scene from a movie, 28 Days, starring Sandra Bullock. She is in rehab from uh, alcohol and substance abuse and is having a particularly difficult time. And her counselor, portrayed by Steve Buscemi, uh, is trying to help her get through this difficult time by telling her, and I'm sure you'll recognize this, God never gives us more than we can handle. To which I, I believe it is that Sandra crosses her arms and goes, Ooh, can I get that stitched on a pillow somewhere? To be incredibly honest, uh, uh, no one here at First UMC of Hammond just yet, but there have, folk, there have uh, been folks who have shared those, those pithy sayings that we Christians have shared with, with me in those times. And get that shared on a pillow somewhere? Age is an issue of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Now that gets attributed to anyone from Mark Twain to Muhammad Ali and Jack Benny. The evidence, however, suggests that it first came from some anonymous government source in 1968. Really. It's evidence of the apparent internet adage when in doubt, quote Mark Twain. Now, Schopenheimer isn't as famous as Mark Twain, at least here in the United States, but that hasn't stopped his name from getting attributed to all sorts of things he never said. It's important, incredibly important, to always verify where a quote comes from because knowing who said it can often make a world of difference. Scripture, of course, is full of quotations that are even more famous than anything Mr. Schopenheimer or Mr. Einstein or even Augustine, St. Augustine ever said. Sometimes they get misquoted or taken out of context, like the oft-used spare the rod, spoil the child. Isn't that one a favorite for parents of a certain age? Actually, Proverbs 13.24 says nothing about rewarding recalcitrant children with a new iPad. Or how about God won't give us more than we can bear? That one's a very popular one. The actual verse says, I'm sorry, says that God won't let us be tempted beyond our ability and that God will provide us a way of escape. Jesus actually said that we would each get a cross, which is really more than any of us can bear on our own. You see? To really know what God is saying to us, we have to go to the source. And today's passage from Isaiah is perfect for that. We find an eminently quotable piece of scripture. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary and walk and not be faint. It's a quote that has been used in a variety of contexts, including uh, a helmet, uh, I'm sorry, football helmets like those of uh, quarterback Tim Tebow when he was, uh, not, not the helmet, his eye black, when he was at the University of Florida. In that case, the reference to young men not getting weary and running without fainting might have more to do with getting in the end zone than the prophet's original intent. If we want to really use the quote accurately, we have to consider the source. The context of the, quotes, the quote comes from Judah's exile in Babylon, an event that gave Israel its own version of Schopenhauer's hell, on, hell of swinging between suffering and boredom. It's not written to strong young men on a football field 
or to people seeking a little inspiration to put on the walls of their offices, right? Google the verse and you'll see all sorts of uh, pictures with soaring eagles, successory type stuff. It's written to people who have actually been kicked off the hill where God's temple stood and now find themselves as strangers in a strange land bearing the yoke of slavery again, looking for any kind of hope they can muster. It's clear from the text that the people of Judah were exhausted after all of this and teetering on the edge of a figurative abyss. God won't give us anything more than we can bear on our own. In the midst of Judah's exhaustion came this word of hope. For them, the words of God spoken through the prophet Isaiah were so quotable that they may have recited them every day. While considering the divine source, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint or grow weary. God's understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. It's a repeat of the same concept in verses 21 through 26. So there can be no doubting the source. God is the one who is ever vigilant, ever working to save God's people. What God is saying through the prophet is that although the future looks like a meaningless ordeal of suffering only alleviated by a meaningless death, God had not given up on them. Although they are faint and weary, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. The quote is great, but it's the source that makes it the more important thing. In the 21st century, we have gotten pretty good at outsourcing our wisdom and knowledge to whatever pops up on our screens in front of us. Despite a couple of decades of warning to the contrary, many people still believe that if it's on the internet, it's true. Isaiah, however, called God's people to open their ears to listen to the voice that calls out in the wilderness and to listen to the God who has ordered all of creation. We don't find the best wisdom in brainy quotes or pithy sayings, but rather in waiting on and trusting in the God who made us and cares for us and loves us and does not want to see us laid out on that deserted island all alone, exhausted physically, spiritually. Our strength, our inspiration, and our renewal are assured if we wait on God. It's amazing what spiritual and physical exhaustion can do to us. We can't help but think that Schopenhauer's pessimistic negativity was the result of his father's apparent suicide in Arthur's teen years. A child of his was born and died in the same year, and he experienced financial difficulty because of a lawsuit. His relationship with his mother was strained. He, she disparaged his work, telling him that it was rubbish, his own mother. It's no wonder that his writing is so gloomy and without So often we can feel that way. And maybe you're feeling that way now. Don't take this the wrong way. But that's okay. So often we as people of the way place a premium on the idea that one must at least display that you are hopeful and joyous and that you are engaging in a, 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 a spirit of peace. In that moment, right? We have to be the calm, quiet center of the universe all the time with a smile on our face and our Bibles in our hand and our it's we value it over everything else and sometimes even over actual discipleship. It's so pervasive that we often pressure ourselves and each other to pull ourselves out of our own doldrums by dint of just loving Jesus. And if you are a human being who has lived for any length of time, you will know that that is much easier said than done. It's not that easy. And even thinking that is antithetical to the gospel. You see, weeping 
will endure for the night, but in the morning, joy. We don't deny pain and suffering is real and can affect us all, some harder than others, but we cannot encourage handling it by not handling it. We cannot encourage folks to overcome their pain by telling them to just put a smile on their face or to pray harder. Certainly, we can pray harder for them. We can encourage them to pray harder, but they should know that just because they pray harder doesn't mean that their situation will get better faster. Sometimes what you're going through is just what you're going through. The challenge for the faithful is to come out of it on the other side, at least still holding on to that last little tether. It's tough. It's really tough. And I, I tell you, it's tough now, and it's getting tough for me. I was the calm, quiet center of uh, uh, the universe uh, early on in the pandemic. You know, really hitting it off, really, it was... Over time, it just breaks down. Maybe you feel that way. Maybe you are just killing it, and that's fantastic. But we will experience pain. We will experience hardships. We will experience depression and a feeling that there is nothing that will revive our dead spirits. But we cannot encourage folks to handle it by putting a, a, a gleaming smile on their face. God walks with us through the blaze as it rages around us. We may be weak. We may be exhausted. God is the God of both joy and sorrow. God is the God of the energetic and the exhausted. No matter who you are, where you fall in these categories, God is the God of you. You are worthy of that because God says you are. We can get that way too when we be begin to believe the inner quotes that we've heard so often. We can begin to think that we are not worthy, that God has abandoned us, that we are too tired to even consider the future. But these words, these quotable, quotable words remind us that the one who created the world is never going to give up on us. God does not faint or grow weary. God's understanding is unsearchable. You have to wonder whether Schopenhauer had quoted these words more often in his writing might have been a little less doldrummy and maybe a little more quotable where people wouldn't mistake his quotes. But even if it wasn't, even if it wasn't, God would still be the God of Schopenhauer. God is still the God of you. And you can quote me. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now join me in our communion hymn. can't remember just off the top of my head which number that is. I believe 609. 620, thank you very much. Either way, you're watching on the screen or you're listening, so uh, you're just going to hear me.
us and we, though many throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Many the gifts. In this time, we enter into our time of partaking in the Holy Sacrament. In the United Methodist Church, we celebrate Holy Communion with an open table, which is to say that if you come with a heart seeking Jesus, you may come without needing to be a member or even needing to be a believer beforehand. We encourage you to come forward because we believe grace is offered, the grace of God offered in communion, in the Holy a uh, sacrament is sufficient for salvation. In this time, let us gather at the table Jesus has set. On the night in which he gave himself up, gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink for this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. God is the God of both the excited 
and those in conflict. God is a God of the exhausted and the joyful. And as we leave this place today, I want to leave you with a song that I, uh, funnily enough, heard at a, uh, an Arlo Guthrie concert, uh, one that you may or may not recognize. I have done it before, but uh, it's uh, in this time, peace can be at a premium. And so I want to share this uh, song with you as we leave today. so much for joining me this morning. God is a God of peace and will bring it to you even in the midst of your suffering. As you leave this place today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you all and give you peace. Amen.